I'm Diasha. In today's lesson, we investigate the conservation of mass and atoms during chemical change. We'll start this lesson by going back to the time of a man who overthrew a lot of old thinking in chemistry. This man was Antoine Lavoisier. Lavoisier worked for a private company that collected taxes for the French government at a time of great political unrest in France. But chemistry was his passion. Lavoisier was sentenced to death by guillotine because of his involvement in tax collection. His execution was a tragedy for the development of people's understanding of chemistry. One of his colleagues said after his death, it took them only an instant to cut off that head and a hundred years may not produce another like it. Lavoisier, with the help of his wife, Marie Anne, decomposed and synthesized many different substances. He did many experiments very carefully and collected very accurate and precise data. Lavoisier showed that the quantity to take notice of when investigating changes is the macroscopic property of mass. We measured mass too when we explored the changes involved in extracting copper from malachite. But we did it in a slightly different way to Lavoisier. In this lesson, we will measure mass during some of the changes we have seen in earlier lessons in much the same way as Antoine and Marie-Anne Lavoisier did. Malachite, or copper carbonate, breaks down into simpler substances upon heating in an open system and loses mass. We explained that this missing mass was carbon dioxide, a gas, which was let into the air. Lavoisier trapped this gas when he explored chemical changes. Let's do the same thing. Let's heat pure copper carbonate and trap the gas before it escapes. Hi there. Have a look at the apparatus I've set up here. I've got some copper carbonate in this test tube and I'm going to seal the test tube with this stopper, tightly sealed. I've got some plastic tubing connected to a syringe. No gas can escape from this. It is a closed system. I'm now going to find the mass of the whole system by placing it on the triple beam balance. I found that the mass of this system is exactly 46,5 grams. Take note that the plunger is exactly on the 5 milliliter mark. Now watch what happens when I heat up the copper carbonate. The copper carbonate decomposes to form copper oxide plus carbon dioxide. Now look at the plunger. Can you see that it has moved out? The expanding carbon dioxide has pushed the plunger out. Now let's measure the mass of the system and it hasn't changed. The final mass of the system is still 46,5 grams. During our previous lesson, the copper carbonate lost mass on heating. But that's because we let the carbon dioxide escape from the test tube. This time, the carbon dioxide stays inside our apparatus. So, from this experiment, we can conclude that the mass of the reactants before heating is the same as the mass of the products after heating. Decomposing copper carbonate changes the copper carbonate, but decomposing copper carbonate does not destroy matter. Lavoisier showed that whenever mass seems to be gained by or lost from open systems, a gas is either taken from the air or given off into the air. Lavoisier described his findings to state a law, and this is a translation of the very words he used. We must lay it down as an incontestable axiom that in all the operation of art and nature, nothing is created. An equal quantity of matter exists both before and after the experiment. In less formal language, this means that it is impossible to create matter and it is impossible to destroy matter during chemical change. We measured mass in all of our experiments just like Lavoisier did. Mass is a macroscopic property. But now we can go further than Lavoisier did or had time to in his shortened life. We can explain our macroscopic properties at a microscopic level. Matter has mass. 
but matter is made of atoms, so atoms must have mass. If mass is conserved, then atoms must be conserved too. This means that the bonds holding copper, carbon and oxygen in copper carbonate break during decomposition. New bonds form to give new substances with the same number of atoms. Sometimes it is difficult to accept that the quantity of matter and hence the number of atoms is the same before and after a change. Sometimes things around us just seem to disappear. Take a candle for instance. It gets shorter and shorter as it burns. True, some of the wax melts and runs down the candle, but when the candle stops burning, there's much less wax left in the saucer than there was in the candle. But look what happens if we burn this candle in the air under a closed flask on the pan of our balance. We can see the candle getting shorter and shorter, but as you can see, the mass reading on the balance does not change as the candle burns. This shows us once again that the total mass of the candle and the air in the flask is the same before, during and after the chemical change involved in the burning. The products of the chemical change, the carbon dioxide and water vapor, are trapped inside the flask. They cannot escape into the air. So, matter is not destroyed during this change even though it seems to be. The mass of the wax plus the air before burning is the same as the mass of the gases formed and the unused air after the candle finishes burning. At a microscopic level, we interpret this to mean that the same number of atoms become rearranged in different ways to form products. This rearrangement involves bond breaking and bond formation. Mass doesn't change during this rearrangement. So we can be sure that the number of atoms before the change is the same as the number of atoms after the change. All the changes that we have looked at so far have been chemical changes. Now let's see if mass is conserved during physical changes too. The mass of the ice and the beaker is 68,42 grams. If I put the beaker in some hot water, the ice melts. Now I first have to dry the outside of the beaker before I can measure the mass again. What do you expect that we will find? The mass of the beaker and its content doesn't change. It's still 68,42 grams. Melting 50 grams of ice will give us 50 grams of water. When ice containing any number of water molecules melts, that same number of water molecules becomes rearranged to form water. Melting ice doesn't destroy water molecules. The law of conservation of mass and hence conservation of atoms is true for all physical and chemical changes. When you learn about how to do chemical calculations, you will find out just how useful the law of conservation of mass is. But let's get a sneak peek now. Imagine you react 40 grams of copper with 10 grams of oxygen. What mass of product would you expect to find? We start by writing a word equation to represent the change. This is copper plus oxygen gives copper oxide. Copper and oxygen are the reactants and copper oxide is the product. This equation enables us to identify the reactants and the product. The law of conservation of mass tells us that the mass of the copper plus the mass of the oxygen equals the mass of the copper oxide. The mass of the product is thus 50 grams. Easy? If you thought so, you should also find today's task easy to complete. Here it is. Heating 247 grams of copper carbonate forms 159 grams of copper oxide. Write a word equation to represent this change. Use the law of conservation of mass to work out the mass of carbon dioxide that forms during the reaction. I'm sure that you have found today's lesson quite interesting. See you in our next lesson when we will start to investigate the behavior of gases. Goodbye. Yeah.